Preparing our entire bird is kind of intimidating, even for me, who loves to cook. But this is a no-fail, easy method to always get the perfect roast chicken. I'm going to serve it with some air fryer baby potatoes and some quick sautéed broccoli. Perfect for your Thanksgiving, for Christmas, for any occasion. Let's get started and we'll take a look at our chicken first. And you know, you don't even have to worry about getting kitchen twines because usually the bird you get will have some twines with it. So I've just untied it, then I'm going to slice up some lemon in half and then add that into the cavity. You can, if you want, season the inside as well. But honestly, don't worry about it. This is an easy, no intimidation kind of method. I also have some thyme here, so add that along with the lemon. And if you want, you can also add in other combinations of herbs and even half a shallot. Now, once you've filled up the cavity, then you want to tie up those legs. So to do that, take your kitchen twine, go under the legs and then kind of make a figure eight going under one leg and then the other legs so now that you have it kind of crisscrossing just like this, then just tie it up. Any regular knot will be fine. And if you want, you can cut off any excess. But honestly, I just keep it on because then later on, I can just pull it like a lace and open up the twine without messing around with shears. Then I'm gonna get a sharp knife and score the chicken legs. That's gonna help cook the dark meat, the, the, the tedious part. The, the hard to cook parts of the chicken and I'm gonna go all the way to the bone and it also makes it look so good the skin becomes extra crispy hmm it's gonna be great so just cut it all the way I'm gonna go for three slits and then we can just take our pan and then fill that up with some olive oil now I'm gonna credit this method to Adam Ragusio love your videos and this really is a no fail method so put your chicken in there and then just kind of roll it all over and cover every single bit of it with the olive oil. Then go ahead and wash your hands, season with salt and pepper, and then again, roll it all around, mop up all the seasonings, and your bird is now ready to start cooking. Now you wanna turn the heat on medium to medium high, and just cook this until it starts to smell like it's about to burn. And what we're doing is we're kind of kickstarting the parts of the bird that take longer than the breast to cook and we're giving it a head start so that includes your back which we don't even eat and then the thigh meat that's all tucked up in the back and once you get a smell that's kind of smoky and you think that it's about to burn well i have my oven heated at 400 fahrenheit so add that in there and make sure you add it on the lower third of the oven and you want the to bird is going to take about an hour to 20 minutes to complete the process. cooking while that's going on i'm going to prepare some baby wet potatoes boil them in water until they're fork tender and don't forget to season the water as well and here are my potatoes after they were done cooking i'm just going to leave it aside and i'll only cook it once the chicken is almost done just toss it with some spray oil or olive oil and just set that aside. And then just to save some time, in that same pot of water as the potatoes, add in your broccoli, and we just want to blanch them. We want to par cook them so that they are crisp tender. So after cooking it for about a minute, minute and a half, drain the broccoli and then transfer it to a ice water bath to shock the green color on the veggies. Just going back to the chicken, just make sure you turn the pan every 10 or so minutes. And just by the color of that chicken, you can tell it's pretty close to being done. So you can transfer your potatoes into the oven or into an air fryer and then fry it on a high heat until they get nice and golden brown and crispy. We've already cooked them. We boiled them. So all that we need is some color, some texture, some crispiness. Now, I'm pretty happy with how this chicken is looking. It's perfectly crispy, golden brown all over and you saw how easy it was to get here and you want to let the bird rest just to make sure that you have the juiciest chicken resting it helps all the juices to settle down in the meaty parts of the bird and not just run out 
the moment you slice it. And you want to make sure you check the temperature of the bird as well. Check the thicker spots of the leg, of the thigh, of the breast, and make sure everything is at least 165 Fahrenheit. So grab a good thermometer. It really is helpful. Unless you're a pro at these birds. In that case, I don't know why you're on this video, but thank you. And to help it to rest, just move that into a pan and just let all the juices from the bird collect onto that plate because we're going to be using that for our gravy really soon. So you can see in the chicken pan all of those beautiful caramelized brown bits. Perfect for our gravy. And in this other pan, I'm heating up some butter for our broccoli. The gravy needs a bit of help to make it really nice and flavorful. So add in one chopped shallot. And if you did choose to put the shallot in a chicken cavity, just take that out. That's going to be really nice, soft, sweet, and juicy. Add that in the pan while that's on medium heat. And then we'll also add in some garlic. We want to now saute this until this mixture has become nice and flavorful. And in the meanwhile, in the butter that's melted for our broccoli, we're going to add in some chopped garlic and let that become fragrant as well. In the meanwhile, our potatoes are getting crispy. And here's our broccoli. You can now drain this and add that to the pan along with your garlic. And we just want to saute this for a couple of minutes with some salt, some pepper, until it's nice and tasty. In the meanwhile, the potatoes are looking as good as they are. And you can season them with some salt as well. And keep them warm, toss it up, and we can always reheat it whenever the chicken is ready to carve. And for the chicken, I can easily untie that knot by just pulling on the string. And I'm gonna add the thyme that's in there with all those beautiful flavors, put it in to my pan for my gravy. And that's gonna really infuse it with all that goodness. And while that happens, make sure to season your broccoli as well. And make sure you don't end up overcooking it because I'm not a fan of these hearty green veggies getting too soft. Crisp tender is the best way. Just add some salt and pepper. And for the gravy, let's now deglaze it with some white wine and then let that simmer for a couple of minutes. And as that is going on, the plate that we have our chicken resting on, well, that's going to be full of juices. Add that into the pan to get all those flavors. The broccoli is looking great. So you can set this aside now. And all we have left to do is finish the gravy and then carve the chicken. So I'm going to add in some flour into my gravy that's simmering and then just lightly roast that. Just mix that around, make sure nothing is starting to burn and have some broth on the side because you're going to need that really soon. And as you see, it is starting to stick a bit, but I want to cook it a little bit more until I get some of that roasted aroma. And that was just about here. So now you can start thinning out this gravy by adding in some broth until you get a nice and smooth texture. Something like this. And now you just want to simmer this on low heat, season and taste and adjust to your preference. And always keep the gravy thinner than you want it to be because as the gravy cools down, well, it will become Thicker. This meal is part of the hashtag give thanks collab with 14 of the channels. So I'm going to link those down below. You're going to get some delicious international Thanksgiving recipes and you can see all kinds of ways to celebrate Thanksgiving. Check that out downstairs. In the meanwhile, this platter is to die for. And I'm really happy with how this is looking, especially that leg. And for all of you making mashed potatoes, you can use the boiled red potatoes that we had earlier and add some of that nice chicken fat in there from our pan along with milk, cream, butter and get the best mash out there because of all that flavor. Garlic mash is my favorite. Now we can make a whole video on how to carve a chicken but I'll just make it quick over here. So we have the leg piece. So you want to get a sharp knife and cut through the thigh bone and then we can split the thigh and the drumstick along the drumstick bone. When it comes to carving out the breast part, what you want to do is kind of go down 
a bit offset from the center, from the breastbone, go down and then curve to the left to go around the ribs and you'll get a perfectly sliced piece of chicken breast, which I have sliced over here. You have the nice skin, the juicy meat, your veggies, your sides, your gravy. And if you want more stress-free ways to make delicious food at home and want more videos just like this, be sure to hit subscribe. And if you want to see how to make the best creamy mash, well, I'll link that right over here. See y'all.